Centuries ago, drifting tribes of the Alamari people ventured south in search of a new home. After an arduous journey, they were rewarded with a lush and promising land which they named Ferelden, or Fertile Valley in their tongue. In the Dragon Age, the kingdom of Ferelden stretches from the Frostback Mountains in the west to the Amaranthine Ocean to the east. Nationhood has undeniably tamed this once savage country, but the coarse, willful, and fiercely independent nature of their Alamari forefathers can still be recognized in the Ferelden people. The Kingdom of Ferelden exhibits many of the characteristics of a traditional feudal monarchy, including an anointed sovereign and a variety of royal and noble ranks. Unlike its rival kingdoms across Thedas, however, power in Ferelden derives from the consent of the governed, a lingering remnant of Alamari tribal culture that prized skill and ability above bloodline and birthright. It is the freeholders, one of the kingdom's lowest social classes, who are responsible for appointing their respective ban or aral to Ferelden's noble structure, and this appointment is revisited each year. While each freehold tends to entrust the same family across generations to represent them within the nobility, creating de facto noble dynasties, there remains the ever-present possibility of change. Freeholders dissatisfied with their local bond or aral might revoke their patronage and instead support a nearby rival. Even the power of the king is subject to the approval of those below, a custom demonstrated in the yearly lands meet, in which all the nobles of Ferelden gather in the capital city of Denerim to take part in a grand council. The lands meet acts as Ferelden's official legislative body, and while a particularly popular or powerful king can usually enjoy broad support from the nobility, the council can override the king on any matter. As such, the reigning monarch must continually work for the support of lesser nobles. Dividing the freemen and the nobility lies the craft houses, semi-formal groups of skilled laborers and tradesmen who have come to exert a great deal of power over various industries. While the craft houses have no formal political authority, the control they have over local economies allows them to extend their influence across the nobility, and their words tend to carry great weight. Even the lowest levels of Ferelden society enjoy numerous privileges when compared to neighboring kingdoms. Slavery and serfdom is forbidden, and even the most menial of tasks is paid for in coin or barter. This right extends to the displaced elven population living within the country, who enjoy a significantly better quality of life than elsewhere in Thedas. The unusual style of governance practiced in Ferelden is widely seen as crude or barbaric by outsiders, and the Ferelden people as a whole are considered disorganized, dirty, and obstinate, but also capable of great strength and determination. Loyalty is prized above all by Ferelden's even at the expense of wealth, power, or even reason. This trait has, perhaps somewhat curiously, manifested in the unique relationship between the Ferelden people and their dogs, who are routinely employed in hunting game, rooting out vermin, herding livestock, and guarding homes. The Mabari, a unique breed of highly intelligent dog magically bred by members of the Circle of Magi, are highly regarded within Ferelden, their likeness even gracing the kingdom's royal family's crest. This reverence for wildlife is a trait that predates the modern kingdom, its roots in the earliest Alamari settlers who bonded with wolves and worshipped a wide variety of deities based in nature. Legend states that the first werewolves were created during this time, the result of a broken pact between a wolf and his Alamari master. Regardless of the validity of these tales, the Alamari were plagued by werewolves as they spread across Ferelden, finally driving the beasts back into the darkest forests where they are whispered to linger still. Over time, the Alamari faced other foes, including a bloodthirsty rebel tribe known as the Avar and the mysterious Chisind who dwelt deep within the Kokari wilds. It was the Tevinter Imperium which presented the greatest threat, however, and time and time again attempted to exert its influence past the Frostback Mountains. 
While the Imperium was able to build several fortresses and even extend the Imperial Highway as far as Lake Callan had, their tenuous hold on Ferelden was broken after a century of constant raids and the far greater threat of the Darkspawn, which spread across the Tevinter homeland during the First Blight. In the aftermath of the First Blight and the destruction of much of the Imperium, the tribes of the Alamari truly united for the first time under the Prophet Andraste, who led her people on an exalted march to the realm of Tevinter itself. The Imperial armies were shattered, but Andraste was betrayed and killed, her martyrdom leading to the formation of the Chantry, which grew to become the dominant religion in Thetis, but reduced the Alamari to a collection of warring tribes once more. Ferelden had been united in purpose, if only for the briefest of moments. Centuries of strife passed before Kalanhad Theron, known to history as Kalanhad the Great, finally achieved what only Andraste had done before, united the Alamari tribes into a single nation, and became the first Ferelden king. His descendants would go on to lead Ferelden for centuries, enduring rebellion and hardship, and even occupation by the Orlasian Empire. The liberation of Ferelden by King Merrick Theron is considered the beginning of the Golden Age of the Kingdom, bringing with it renewed prosperity and power. While faraway lands struggled to contain a series of blights and the darkspawn that spilled forth, Ferelden was left in peace and able to reach the height of its power. In the year 930 of the Dragon Age, the Grey Wardens returned to Ferelden after a prolonged exile and brought with them a warning that the Fifth Blight was slowly spreading from the Kakari Wilds. The kingdom, now ruled by Kaelin Theron, mustered its armies in the hopes of stopping the Blight in its infancy, but were decimated in the Battle of Ostagar, during which Kaelin was slain. His death plunged Ferelden into a civil war, as the opportunistic Loghain Mactir named himself regent to the throne against the wishes of much of the nobility and freeholders. With Darkspawn ravaging the country and the Blight spreading ever outward, Ferelden loyalists, together with a growing alliance led by the Grey Wardens, called for a landsmeet. The council ended with Loghain defeated in a duel against a champion of the Grey Wardens, stopping the civil war and restoring the kingdom. In the final battle of the Fifth Blight, the newly reunited Ferelden army marched alongside the Dwarves of Orzammar, the Nomadic Dalish, and the Circle of Magi to counterattack the Darkspawn as they plundered Denerim. Amidst the fighting in the burning capital, the last two Ferelden Grey Wardens slew the Archdemon Orthemio, ending the Fifth Blight and saving the kingdom. Ferelden has never been a land of enduring peace, and while the threat of the Darkspawn has been broken, their influence remains across much of the land. To neighboring Orle, the kingdom is seen as weak and ready to be retaken, while strange and dangerous magic continues to leave its mark across the whole of Thedas. The kingdom of Ferelden faces an uncertain future as it enters the last half of the Dragon Age. The Templin Institute investigates nations, organizations, and factions from alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Do you have a suggestion for a future episode? Let us know by leaving a comment.